Today we'll talk about a science fiction movie starring Keanu Reeves, but don't worry, I'm not talking about The Matrix, I'm talking about Johnny Mnemonic. This movie was released in 1995 and was directed by Robert Longo, but the interesting thing here is that the movie takes place in 2021, and I'm making this video in 2021, so it'll be interesting to see if Robert could see into the future or not. So be careful with the spoilers, and if you like these videos, please don't forget to like and subscribe. This is is just my personal opinion and you should see the movie since this video isn't a substitute for watching it. You can find links to it in the description. This is the first sentence of the movie, second decade of the 21st century corporations rule. It seems like Robert was actually able to see the future. The second sentence of the movie, the world is threatened by a new plague. Okay, Robert is a time traveler, no doubt about it. This new plague is called NAS, nerve attenuation syndrome. The cure as well as its cause is unknown. The citizens don't like what the corporations are doing, so they create a resistance movement, the Lotex. The corporations must protect themselves right, so they decide to hire the the Yakuza. There's also something called mnemonic couriers who are elite agents who smuggle data through wet wired brain implants. It seems Robert has been talking too much with Elon Musk. We see Keanu for the first time, but like the title says, his name is Johnny. Johnny is lying in his bed and it appears that he's wasted. He then turns the TV on. This is a futuristic movie that takes place in 2021. I'd have assumed that the TV would be the size of the wall or a hologram, but no, the TV is is the size of my laptop. I guess Robert is not a time traveler after all. Johnny makes a phone call through his TV and starts talking with Ralphie. It looks like Johnny is a courier as he is talking with Ralphie about going to Beijing to get a file. Johnny arrives in Beijing and while in the hotel elevator, he plugs something into the back of his head. He is measuring how much space he has left. The capacity of his brain is 160 GB. <laughs> really? His job is to smuggle data through his brain and he can only carry 160 GB. I had more space in my iPod shuffle. Johnny gets out of the elevator and enters a room. Inside the room are five guys who are freaking out because Johnny is late. Johnny doesn't care and starts giving orders to the other guys. While issuing orders, they ask Johnny if he has enough space in his head, as the file he is about to take is 320 GB. If he doesn't have enough space and he uploads the file, he could die in a couple of days. Okay, so you're going to an important business meeting and you don't have space to upload the files of your contractors. He's not worried about dying, so he uploads the file. After uploading the file, he feels a little dizzy, so he goes to the bathroom and immediately starts bleeding from the nose. Wouldn't it have been safer to just carry a USB stick? Johnny is in the bathroom trying not to bleed out while some bad guys who appear to be Yakuza's enter the room and start killing everyone. One of the Yakuza's tries to enter the bathroom and immediately gets a KO by Johnny. He then leaves the bathroom and starts fighting some bad guys. Maybe he isn't the world's best actor, but man, he knows how to fight. After beating up some guys, Johnny leaves the room. One of Johnny's contractors is still alive, so he tries to burn the evidence about the file Johnny is carrying in his head. One of the Yakuza sees him and finds out Johnny is taking the file to Newark, US. Johnny arrives at Newark, but first, he needs to pass through customs. There's a machine that scans Johnny's body to see if there's any problem with his passport and to check he's not smuggling anything. This machine is so advanced that it also tells Johnny that he needs to go to the doctor, or he's going to have neuro damage in about 24 hours. All of this in less than two minutes. That's amazing. Each time I travel, I spend more than one hour standing in line and answering the same question. Well, Johnny got out in two minutes and he also got a psychological evaluation. I would love to live in that reality. Johnny is now in Newark and he decides to call Ralphie to find out why he's carrying something that appears to be so dangerous. Ralphie tells him to calm down and to deliver the file to some guys in some random direction. Right after hanging up with Johnny, Ralphie sees a girl arriving at his office. Office. I must say this office appears to be in a club, which is cool. The problem is that his office is a chair and a table. The business of data smuggling is not top of the market, I guess. 
This girl is called Jane, and she wants to be Ralphie's bodyguard, but Ralphie thinks that's not a good idea due to her neurological disease, so he rejects her offer. We return to Johnny. He arrives at the location Ralphie gave him to deliver the file. He arrives at something that looks like an abandoned house. It seems suspicious, but if Johnny is not nervous about the location, why should we be? Well, it looks like I was correct, and he was wrong. After he enters the house, he finds out that Ralphie had set him up. Two guys try to kill him, but Johnny is a fighter so he beats up one of the guys and escapes from the other. Then a new guy arrives. He is called J-Bone. He helps Johnny kill the bad guys and then disappears. Johnny is angry with Ralphie so he decides to pay a visit to his luxurious office. With the help of one of his bodyguards, Ralphie takes Johnny hostage. Remember the Yakuza who killed Johnny's contractors in Beijing? His name is Shinji and he works for Ralphie. Shinji and Ralphie are trying to cut Johnny's head, but Jane suddenly appears and saves him. Johnny and Jane escape while Shinji decides to kill Ralphie. Shinji was getting close to Johnny and Jane, but they were able to escape because the Lotex, led by J-Bone, helped them. Johnny begins to feel sick. Jane finds out that he's a smuggler and gets excited. Girls love bad guys. Johnny then tells Jane that he needs to free up some stories to get the job done, so he decides to erase his childhood memories. Damn, that's pretty hardcore. He knows he needs to remove the file from his head as soon as possible or he could die. He arrives in an abandoned building and starts to use a computer. It looks like it's something from 1995, but then he enters some kind of system that looks pretty cool. Johnny makes calls to Beijing to find out how to remove the file from his head. Do you remember Assassin's Creed? Well, this looks something like that. I'd love to have to do this each time I made a long distance call. After he finishes playing, a sign appears on the screen saying he'll receive a call from Dr. Alcum. Shinji tracks Johnny's movements through the web and notices something about releasing a virus. Shinji was close to catching Johnny, but Takahashi, his boss, was not impressed with his past performance, so he decides to hire someone else to capture Johnny. He hires Carl the Preacher. Because because nothing is more effective than praying. Well, he isn't that sort of preacher. He's more like a bounty hunter who looks like a Viking, definitely the right person for the job. Johnny uses Jane's credit card to make a Zoom call through a payphone. In my city, payphones don't work at all, never mind make Zoom calls. I'm telling you guys, I would love to live in Johnny's mnemonic universe. Anyways, Johnny calls some guy that works at a pharmaceutical company. He tells him that he has a file containing pharmacom data. The guy replies that he'll make the arrangements to get Johnny's file. Jane starts to convulse, and Johnny realizes that Jane has NAS, so he decides to take her to Spider, a doctor who is friends with Jane. Spider helps Jane but gets a little suspicious about Johnny. I would also feel that way if suddenly a stranger arrived at my house carrying my dying friend. After Johnny starts to argue with Spider, he agrees to take Johnny with Dr. Alcum. They then arrive at what seems to be an underground hospital. Spider tells Johnny that this is called NAS Underground and he works here. When Johnny asks to meet Dr. Alcum, Spider tells him that the doctor doesn't exist. That's just a code. So the doctor doesn't exist. Wouldn't it have been easier to just tell Johnny that instead of driving to the hospital. It seems like Spider just enjoys driving his truck, which is pretty cool by the way. After giving Johnny this bad news, Spider tells Johnny that he can remove the files, but there are three possible outcomes. The surgery could be a success and Johnny would leave the room like nothing had happened, which is highly improbable. He could die, or if everything goes right, he would no longer remember anything for more than three minutes at a time. I don't know, but I think that's a little risky. Johnny refuses to have the surgery, and Spider tells him not to be so selfish, as the file in his head is a NAS cure. Again, you didn't think it would have been a good idea to say that before. Spider is not the most straight-talking guy, that's for sure. Johnny and Jane are shocked at the news. When Carl arrives and starts fighting with Spider, Johnny and Jane take advantage of the distraction and start running from there. You have some good friends, Spider. Spider. Johnny and Jane are free to escape, so Johnny calls the Pharmacon guy to arrange the meeting. The scene ends, and now we see Takahashi leave the Zoom meeting. You are in trouble, Johnny. In the meantime, Johnny and Jane go to see Jones, a friend of Spider that can help them with all their problems. J-Bone welcomes them and takes them to meet Jones. They arrive, and there's a dolphin in the room. Yes, a dolphin is gonna save humanity. I cannot take it anymore, guys. I've been watching this movie for ages just to find out a dolphin 
dolphin is gonna save the world. I think this is my fault for trusting Keanu Reeves. Okay, so we're in the Lotex headquarters and waiting for the dolphin to do its magic and take the NAS cure from Johnny's head. Suddenly, the Yakuza's arrive and Takahashi arrives at Jones's office. Takahashi is about to shoot Johnny when suddenly, a woman's face appears on the computer and tells Takahashi that Pharmacon has had the cure for NAS for eight months and that's why his daughter died. Takahashi doesn't seem to like this news, so he cuts the computer in two. Right after that, Shinji arrives and shoots Takahashi to death. Johnny and Shinji start fighting, and Johnny manages to cut his head. Johnny comes back to Jones's office. Halfway, he finds Takahashi, who is resurrected just to give Johnny the rest of the NAS code, before dying again. Great timing to come back to life, Takahashi. Takahashi and Shinji are dead, and Johnny has the complete code, so now Jones should be able to to remove the file from his head. Everything is fine now. Well, not really. A little late, but Carl finally arrives. Johnny is alone and unarmed, so Carl has the advantage. But instead of killing him, he decides to talk to him and gives Jane enough time to arrive and use Jones's telekinetic powers to kill Carl. If the bad guys use their time to kill their enemies instead of talking to them, this world would be completely different. But fortunately, they love to talk. Carl is dead. There are no enemies alive now. Now, at least that's what I think. Johnny gives J-Bone the missing code. He connects Johnny to the machine and starts removing the file. Everything works just fine and the NAS cure is finally available to everyone. Everyone is happy until Johnny turns around and sees Carl start to get up. The camera zooms out and we see that someone is lifting the body so he can throw it into the ocean. What a relief! I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button. Also, please let me know which movie I should do next. Until the next time.